get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small standing by the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you Living might mean taking chances, but then worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth the making. Don't let some hell and harm leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, be considered. Give the heavens above more than just a passing place. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you'll dance.
is a time where family and friends gather in our respective households. We gather around the holiday table. I call it God's holiday table that he blesses us and allows us to return to. It's his table for <clears throat> we know not from season to season who will not make it back to his table and when we will no longer be able to make it back ourselves. So we approach God's holiday table with a reverence and deep gratitude and humility. Now let us approach the throne of grace. Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall I fear? You are the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? We lift our eyes to the hills which come as our help. And our help comes from you, O Lord. And our help comes from you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for thou art with us. Now we ask humbly, Lord, to touch, heal, comfort, and strengthen us. Hold us all in the hollow of your hand. And as long as we have faith, the size of the mustard seed, and believe all things work for good for those who believe in a call according to God's purpose, everything's going to work out and be all right. So this is a celebration of life, a life well lived. So we will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in our mouth. Come magnify the Lord with me. Bless his holy name. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I just want to magnify the Lord for his excellence majesty, dominion, power, grace, and mercy. For he is worthy to be great. So please, give Keith, Kimo, and God a, a, a warm praise hand clap. Give the Lord some praise. Now Keith has fought the good fight, kept the faith, finished his course. He graduates to receive his crowning glory. You know, we never get over a loved one. All we can do is ask God to strengthen us and help us to manage our grief. So we ask God to continue to comfort, strengthen, and heal the family, friends, and associates. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.
this time. We are gonna have a poem from Game Weeks. James here. Praise God. Jasmine, I was Keith's oldest niece. Uh, I'm going to read uh, the poem, Dear Friend, by James. <clears throat> Today is the day you will be laid to rest. But you know what they say, God only takes the best. Everything happens for a reason, even if we may not agree. Just promise to look after us, and if you can, save a spot for me. The thought of never seeing you again brings tears to my eyes, and even more so because all of this was a surprise. But we should never question what God has planned. Sometimes it's not meant for us to understand. So as I sit here and mourn the loss of our beloved friend, we must keep telling ourselves that we will meet again. Love you always and forever. Your friend James. I'm sorry that I had to leave you, my loved ones oh so dear, but you see the master called me, his voice was very clear. I had made my reservation a heaven bound ticket for one, and I knew that he would call me when he felt my work was done. I know that your hearts are heavy because I have gone away, but when the master called me, I know that I could not stay. Yes, I'm sorry I had to leave you, my loved ones oh so dear, but you see the master called me and now I'm resting here. Yes, I've crossed on over to glory and to you all I say, just stay in the hands of Jesus and we'll meet again someday. The family of Keith Jones wishes to thank those that have enriched his life through your acts of kindness and demonstrations of love. We express our sincerest gratitude to all the people of God and friends which have showered us with love, encouragement, and support. Rest well, Uncle. Thank you. Keith, been my friend since 1988. We've been at Bellsburg High in the past year. Keith, the, he taught me so much about life and being kind to people. I'm going to miss my friend. friends. My name is Charlene and I know a lot of the younger people. I used to be around them all the time. I was like the other mother. But when Keith would come in, if he didn't see me and finally realized that I was there, he dropped everything, came and gave me the biggest hug of love every time. He was a loving man, a generous and kind person. And when I got the message, it I just went into total denial, but anybody that had the opportunity to have Keith a part of their life, I think it was better, and I'm glad that I did. Be well. Amen.
I'm sorry, if y'all could just bear with me, please. Take your time. My dad, um, Anthony, is his oldest brother, and he couldn't be here today, so he sent this message for me to read for him. To my baby brother, who is actually a little taller than me, but I could still beat him if need be. Excuse me. Here we are at your own going service. Who knew it would be this soon? If we knew we would have laughed more, talked longer, spent more quality time together. It seems like just yesterday we were playing electric football or playing basketball with rolled up socks with mommy. Time seems like forever until there is no more time left. You were my rock my sounding board, my early morning or late night chat buddy when Rhoda, as only you were allowed to call her, was still asleep. And only a brother could understand what another brother was going through. You grew up to be such a beautiful person and loving brother that I shall miss you very much, Rock. But God never makes a mistake and he surely didn't when he called you to him. I'll see you again. But until then, tell Pop and Grandma I said hello. You were and for shall ever be just that. My rock, my best friend, my baby brother, Keith Chemo Jones. I love you, Anthony. Oh, so nice. Good afternoon, people. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Keith. I met Keith a few years ago uh, with, uh, to what he called his niece, Tan Tanithi, and we were picking him up one day. And she said, Keith, this is Keith. So ever since we had conversations on the phone, all three of us, she would say, Keith number one, Keith number two is on the phone. So I would say, hey, Keith number one, and he's like, no, you Keith number one, I'm Keith number two. I said, no, you're older than me. That makes you Keith number one. He said, I'm 51. I said, you're not no 51, because I'm not even 51 yet. He said, I was born in 1970. I said, oh, I was born in 1970. I said, well, we got a lot in common. I'm a Turner. What are you? He said, I'm a Jones. I said, oh, no, we ain't got that much in common. <laughs> so I was at his house. A couple of months ago, because everybody know Keith could cook. I had to stop by, because he told me he was cooking. <laughs> okay. You ain't got to tell me again, because I'm coming. And I came by his house. He fed me. Nice hospitality. Took, gave me a plate to take home. After that day, I never called him Keith again. I called him Mr. Jones. <laughs> Because I done had the food, so that makes you Mr. Jones. <laughs> and he asked me, he said, well, the business you in, what interesting story do you have to tell? I'm a mortician, too. And I said, well, I don't have an interesting story, but I got one for you. There was a man cooking food for his children, and he heard a knock at the door. He opened the door, and it was death. And he said, well, Mr. Duff, can you give me a minute and let me finish cooking my food for my kids? Duff said, okay. He said, come on in, have a seat. I'm going to feed you and take a load off. So he fed Death, and the traveling that Death was going through, he fell asleep. So the man took the list, looked at it, scratched his name off the top, put his name on the bottom. So after Death had his rest, Death woke up and he said to the man, you know, you treated me with such nice hospitality. You gave me 
nice food. He gave me a nice drink. He said, you know what? On my list, I'm not even going to start at the top. I'm going to start at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I told Peter that story is not just for him, but for us that are living. This is for sure. The only reason that we are not sure, the only reason we are a little, we fear it is because we don't know the how, the when, and the way. But it's a process like birth. If you go through birth, you live the life. But you definitely know after life comes death. But after death comes eternal life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there's no need for none of us to be sitting here if you know Keith the way you say you know him for you to be crying. Why? Because that man has eternal life. Yes. Something that we are all searching to get to. I have no sorrow for a man that I met, who I loved dearly in those few years that I've known. And for him to have this home-going glory, I can't be nothing but happy. Amen. just want to say that I'm going to miss my baby brother. I mean, just watching him grow up from a little boy into a man. Just watching his journey, how he just accomplished so much in life. And there's only like one word that comes to mind when I think of chemo. That's fabulous. Because <laughs> he was fabulous, okay? And everything he did, I mean, when he grew up as a little boy, he was very shy. He just clung to my mom. He stayed, that's the way he learned his cooking skills. He stayed with my mom in the kitchen. My other two brothers, they would be like playing around and like boy around and everything. But Keith, he stayed with mommy. And he loved his mom, you know. I'm here to speak also on behalf of my mom. My mom is hurting right now inside because her baby is no longer here. She couldn't be here. You know, her health is not the best, but she is here in her heart. And she is really hurting. So can you pray for my mom so that she can heal her heart for the loss of her baby boy? But like I said, when I tell you my brother was fabulous, everything from the way he dressed the way he lived his life, the cars he drove, he had the same work ethic and that gusto to get what he want and work hard and play harder. That was Keith. He had a big heart. My baby brother had a big heart. He would just take everyone in. He would feed you, he would clothe you, he would give you shelter. That was Keith. He just opened his heart to everyone. And because I know that now, I know that all my life, but now my heart is just even bigger with him not being here. It's like a void that's missing. And he's in my heart. I miss you, Keith. I always love you. Keep coming to me. Keep giving me signs of confirmation that you're okay. And we'll meet again one day. I love you.
the best song in the world. Let's say that. Amen. And I'm going to read this. I really didn't want to, but. Uh, Keith Kimo Jones. We're home to be with the Lord on the spectrum on Saturday, December 18, which was my birthday. Mm. 2021 at the age 51. Mm. Keith was born on June 13th. Keith was born on June 13th, 1970, to Clinton and Freddie Lee at Back Digital Hospital in North New Jersey. Keith attended the North New Jersey public school system where he has set where he was settled on his studies. He graduated from Bloomsbury High School where he sang in the, in the school choir. Keith accepted Christ as a savior and was a member of Brewett, of Brewett Bassett Church in North New Jersey under the tutelage of Reverend Gerald Dixon. Keith was a previous employee with the GO program for many years before gaining employment with the Community Assess Unlimited in Elizabeth, New Jersey, where he was a direct support professional, home care counselor. He was a, he was devoted to the AD to the AD um, patients there. Keith had a big heart and enjoyed opening his home to family and friends. He was one of the kindest people you could ever have. The pleasure of me. He was a he was an excellent cook, and his family and friends enjoyed his baking skills. He worked hard and played hard. He was a spiritual man and enjoyed serving the Lord. Chief is proceeded in death by his love, by his love and family. Father Clinton Jones. I'm trying to speak too fast. That's okay. Take your time. He lives to cherish his memories. His beloved mother, Freddie L. Jones, three sisters, Ruanne, Ruanne Stalin, Daryl Stalin, Hope, Ron, uh, Hope Jones, Pikewood, and Sonovia Jones, two brothers, Anthony Jones, and Daryl, and wait, Anthony Jones, <coughs> I apologize. That's okay. Anthony Jones, Ronald Jones, and Keith Jones, and Kevin Jones. His nephews, Kevin Marcus and Dallas Jr. His nieces, Jasmine, Michelle, Monica, Dan, De Deanna, and Dina. This one, like, Brianna. His godson, Jamal, his best friend, which he is. James Wicks, and a host of other relatives and family.
with Hope today and the family. And we, our family has intermingled almost like forever, haven't they? Amen. But you know, we're, just, we're thankful that we're able to provide some comfort and a service for you. And, it, and, and this is the other thing we must understand. So it doesn't end now. It continues. Call sometimes. Drop a little card by sometimes. She saved those things, don't you? Yeah. I say I have boxes of cards and things I say. It's good to remember because we all are going to go through this one time or another. And we will ask now, most of us in here have lost a mother or father, sister, brother, or a close friend. But one thing we know that Jesus is our only and our best friend. Isn't that right? Yeah. So this is why uh, we are to God this afternoon because we're here in his presence knowing that he is our all and all. Jesus is our all in all. And we're here to celebrate. I don't remember meeting Keith. I may have because so many things come and go. I may have. But from what I've heard to do today, I feel like I have met him. And I do know him from your memories. And see, this is what keeps us going, our memories, our love. It keeps us going. So while you're going through the next few days, they're going to be very vibrant, your memories are. And you're going to remember all these things. So again, we do honor uh, Keith's mother and all of his family, and even to those who preceded him in death. And they're waiting to meet. They're waiting to meet you. So we wipe our tears away. And then we have to keep on going. But tears are not bad. So just for uh, the word of God today, we're going to go to Psalms. I got two scriptures. Uh, the Old and the New Testament, Psalms 10, 17. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Yes. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. Ephesians 2, 14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. So there will be no petition. So our uh, topic today is God is our comforter. No matter what you go through, you're always going to have a comforter. No matter where you are, you're always going to have a comforter. Don't you remember the individual who was in hell? That he got comforted. He said, sit him down here and just put a little water or something on my tongue or my brow so that I might not have to endure this. And some, who better than David, to direct us to the place where we can find comfort. David, even though he was king, David endured a lot of things. And we on this earth may not be kings or prince, prince but we endure a lot of things. We endure the loss of loved ones. And sometimes we just don't know how to react to that. But the first thing is to talk to the Lord. I can go to the Lord and I can tell him all about my trouble. You can't tell everybody all about your trouble because they're going to have it on Facebook. They'll have it on Zoom. And some of those other ones I don't even know because I don't know how to get on them. And I don't want to know how to get on them. But I can go to the Bible and I can find everything that I need. Understand if you go to the Word of God from the very beginning of this earth until the end of this planet and the renewing of it, there's a word in there from the Lord. Somebody has said, is there a word from the Lord? Oh, I got an answer for you. Oh, yes, there is. But you got to open your heart first and then your ears. God and the Son of God is always standing by. You got to talk to him. He is your best friend. Keep from where, what I am saying, knew that God was his best friend. It's good to have a friend that cares about you. A friend that will go on the cross and die for you. A friend that will do everything there is to make sure that your life is not lost. Friends are important, but you got to have the right kind of friend. Not the one that call you at midnight and say, I'm locked up and come and get me out. Not the one that say, I don't have no money to pay my rent. But the friend that called you up and said, I was just thinking about you. Uh -huh. I ran through my mind. What are you doing running through my mind? 
But I thought about you and I thought I'd just give you a call and just say hi. It's important to say hi and I love you when you think of it because tomorrow's not promised to us. Is that right? It's important to tell somebody how you feel about them. And not only do they feel good, but then you feel better too, don't you? It is good in these days of this uh, plague and all of this stuff and this COVID. But see, COVID can't touch those who are in the Lord because the Lord can hide us in his shadow. Don't you know you can hide in the shadow of the Lord and nobody can find you? The devil can find you. COVID can find you. Only the Lord know where he is. If you belong
tears come, let them come. No matter where you are, people don't understand. That's okay that you knows you anyway. How come you're doing this? How come you're doing that? None of your business. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to be smart with them, but you should try Jesus. I know you tried him. It's in your voice. It's in your walk. It's in your eyes. You got to know.
because it touches me so deeply. We got to be more concerned about each other. We got to care more. We got to love more and do more. And if we do that, God is going to make a way. So, so Keith is going home. You know how it is when you've been away and you go home? Boy, you happy? We, so you might be sad as I said before. He probably just as happy as he can be. Yes. And if he could just, if he could just yell through the clouds and through the firmament and say, "Don't be sad anymore. Don't be sad," because from what you said, he led a, the life that was pleasing to God. Yo, first of all, your life gotta be pleasing to God. You gotta please God. I don't please Lily. I try and please God. Not a hundred percent because I'm not perfect, but I'm working on it. So I, I want you to be encouraged. Like I say, this family, I, I've known them since when? Ever. Thank you, that was the word. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. And we as a people, I mean, I don't, African Americans, I don't call those black because that's not the name of us in the Bible. In some spots they're, they're like, but that was called a color, not by who are. But we gotta become, we gotta stick together. And if one, you got a, a hold to one's hand, and that one is not meant, get somebody in front of you to help pull them through. Amen. Through these through these times, we gotta make it through. I don't know if the pandemic is gonna get any worse. And really, I don't care about that. Because as long as I got Jesus, yes. I'm gonna be alright. But I want you to be all right, too. Amen. I want you to be at ease. I want you to be at peace. And the only way you can be at peace is to have God in your life. And, and yes, you could do it in church. I said you could do it in your own room. You can do it at your bedside. But you, you're going to miss him. And I, I, I and they said like he was like a little trickster. Boy, you, can you imagine the happiness that would bring But this is what we have to do. We gotta know that we know that we know where we're going. Amen. You, you, you won't need no um, roadmap. You won't need any of that. Because God is gonna direct us. Thank you, Lord. God's Amen. gonna keep us. He's gonna make a way for, thank you, God. Thank you. He's gonna make a way forever and forever. Yes. Until eternity ends. And they will be with him in eternal heaven. I hope, you know, the hope, I'm going to come down and hug you later, that you, you feel a little better yeah. to every single family member, whether you're a distant uncle or an or it, you still, we're still blood. And technically, we all are blood. Yes. We're all blood related. Think about it. But I just want to have a word to encourage you and to let you know that everything's going to be all right. right. So I said, after a while, it'll all be over. After a while, the sun will shine. After a while, dark clouds will pass over. Thank you, God. It's going to be all right. After a while. Remember all 
the good times you had together, even remember some of the bad times. Bad times strengthen you. Good times, as I said before, encourage you. So again, I hope I've said something to encourage you, to lift the burden just a little bit for the loss, and that you'll be able to uh, smile even through your tears. So again, uh, whatever we can do, whatever Grace can think of, can do. And see, that's why she is here. I treat her like a human. I do. I call her Grace. I talk to her. She hasn't answered me back yet, though. Not literally, but figuratively she has. And she's provided shelter for a lot. So, again, and it's all, it, it's going to be those days. But, but you're going to get through it. And I will be praying for you. I don't need to know your name, but I will be praying for you. And know that the Lord is going to make the way. He's not, a, he's not a God that fails. And we are thankful that we could offer some source of support. So at this time, I just want to, and if there's anybody, you know, now's the best time. If there's anybody who don't know God as their Savior, stand where you are. Any place is a good place to get saved as far as I'm concerned before you go to the other place. Any place is a good place to get saved at. But if we're all good, so let's give God a hand clap because we're all. Come on, let's give him a standing ovation. Is that right? Well, here's that. Here's dedication.
forebearers. Forebearers, they need. They would like to get eight if necessary. Where did they all? They all went outside. We need eight forebearers. Eight men. See some outside, bring them back in. Bring them back in. The service is not over. Amen. Amen. Not over. Thank you, Jesus. You always wait for benediction. That's your blessing going on. Prayer is your blessing coming in. Show your right. Benediction is blessing going out. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Lord.